Before pre-meds declared their major, they were nothing. After not getting the attention you craved and deserved in high school, you turned to medicine so that you could heal others despite being scarred yourself. Of course, I'm kidding. You turned to medicine because you realized you wouldn't find love without a better personality or at the very least a fatter wallet. You've done some thoughtful research on Google and realized that pediatric, neurosurgical, cardiothoracical radiology has been your calling since age four and you start signing up for classes. Congratulations, you're officially a pre-med now and your journey starts at freshman year. Now, despite your questionable intentions for choosing medicine, you start off wide-eyed and full of enthusiasm. You join some reputable clubs, drop off a couple cans to the food bank, and you love the attention you're getting on social media. This is the pinnacle of pre-med. It's the golden age. Your blissful ignorance of what's to come carries you through a year of weed-out courses, most of which you ace. You would have gotten a 4.02 if that jerk professor just rounded up your 82.1. No worries though, it's not the end of the world. Next stop is sophomore year. In sophomore year, not only does organic chemistry have you questioning your will to live, but you realize that you need to start taking the application more seriously if you want to stand a chance of getting that white coat. And that white coat can't come soon enough because the novelty of being a pre-med has faded and you're getting less recognition from your family and friends. Desperate times call for desperate measures, so you make any excuse to be seen in hospital scrubs and a stethoscope, even though the only beats you've ever listened to are by Dre. The next stop, of course, is, you guessed it, junior year. You are knee deep in the game now and there is no turning back. You're an active subscriber at r slash MCAT and r slash premed and SDN is your homepage. You dedicate every ounce of your being to extracurriculars, volunteering and research, but you feel more useless than ever because you're constantly comparing yourself to internet superheroes and or liars. You want to completely shut off the outside world so you can study for the MCAT, but there's no need to put your phone in do not disturb mode. You're neurotic past the point of likability now and your friends have abandoned you long ago. If you were hoping it gets better, I've got some disappointing news for you because we're still moving down the line as you start applying to medical schools. With your desire for validation at an all time high, you get to work on your medical school Tinder profile, AKA the AMCAS, and you're praying that literally anyone will swipe right. You're not taking any chances though, so you shamelessly beef up your profile until it's barely recognizable. You took 11th grade Spanish and know how to ask where the biblioteca is, sounds like proficiency to me. You handed out water bottles at an anxiety awareness run, you're a mental health advocate and ally. Oh, you helped your brother once with his homework? Volunteer and mentor for disadvantaged students. To make yourself feel better about catfishing medical schools, you'll do one of two things. You either convince yourself that it's okay to lie because everyone's doing it, or you incorporate so many lies into your personal statement that you can't even tell which parts are true anymore. Next, we move on. To senior year. According to the application you just submitted, senior year was the year that you would be ramping up your volunteering, continuing your research, and taking the most complex courses that your university has to offer. Instead, you're doing the bare minimum when it comes to coursework, your research lab has officially declared you MIA, and you've left the entire homeless community out to dry. You spend months doing nothing but checking your phone for interview invitations and wondering if they call it senior year because the stress grays your hair. As you wait, you realize that you've spent so much time going through the motions over the years that you haven't had a chance to step back and consider if you even want to do this anymore. After some crippling retrospection, you realize that being a pre-med has been the exact opposite of what you had once envisioned. You have no friends and no relationship, or at least not a stable one, and you wonder if you'll ever stop hemorrhaging cash. Just as you're about to give up, it finally happens. Your top choice medical school has sent you an interview invite out of pity for your mutilated sense of self-esteem, and all your healthy career reflection is thrown out the window. Your desperation fuels an uncharacteristically magnificent interview performance and you're welcomed home with open arms. Congratulations, you're officially an accepted medical student. And after being accepted, you experience a state of euphoria unattainable by even the most powerful narcotics. Your positive attitude is contagious and people start making their way back into your life again. While you remain elated for a while, you realize that getting accepted into medical school isn't everything that you thought it was going to be. Not only are you broke after paying medical schools thousands of dollars just to ignore you, you'll have to take out hundreds of thousands more if you want to make it through med school. You also realize that, somehow, getting into medical school hasn't solved all your life's problems and that you ultimately remain unhappy and unfulfilled. There's no time to dwell on these minor concerns though because medical school orientation is right around the corner. The excitement that comes from your white coat ceremony convinces you to carry on, only to start the cycle all over again. But this time, you're one step closer to the edge. What's up y'all? If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to subscribe. New videos every week.